The weather here has not been so great. It's been a weird teasing transitional uh, state where we'll have everything bloom and everything's green and then it snows. Um, just a light snow, nothing really sticking, but at the same time, it keeps me from being outside doing what I like to do. So on the upside, that's given me a lot of time to think about the results that I got from the soil tests that I did uh, a couple weeks ago and kind of figure out a plan for what I want to do as far as fixing anything that's low or high, things like that. So what I want to do today is go over the results of my soil test and talk about my plan for this year in the lawn. So with that, we'll go ahead and get started. So like I said, a couple weeks ago, I uh, took some soil samples from my yard, uh, sent them off to Soil Savvy. Uh, if you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link uh, in the description and also up in the corner so that you can take a look at that. Super easy process, relatively inexpensive, and really nice to know what's actually going on in my soil and nice to kind of get an idea of what I can do to correct it. So let me show you my results and talk about what my initial reactions and thoughts were. And then I'll go ahead and talk about my plan to correct some of these things that I found in these results. So here we go. Okay, so here are my results from Soil Savvy. And just to go over some initial thoughts, first impressions when I first saw this, um, I was really drawn towards the NPK. And as you can see, my nitrogen is very low. I'm deficient in nitrogen. That's surprising to me. I have always been kind of cowboyish as far as throwing down fertilizer. Um, I typically throw down a lot of milorganite. There's, there's some nitrogen in there. And I do have the synthetics that I put down um, a couple times a year as well. So that, that right there really surprised me. Um, the potassium also low as well, but look at this. Look at the calcium. It's through the roof. The optimal range is 90 to 175. My calcium is at 541. That's crazy to me. So that was one of the first things that really caught my eye there. Also, I notice as far as going back to the NPK, uh, phosphorus is approaching that target area. So phosphorus isn't so much deficient. It's almost like right on par. So I, I like seeing that. As far as the micronutrients go, I'm noticing iron is low. That surprised me. We get a lot of iron from milorganite. We also get iron out of the next products. And so to see it low was kind of, kind of interesting. Overall, the micronutrients are kind of low. They need a little bit of push and the pH is a little bit high. Okay, so as far as a plan goes, um, this is what I've come up with. I've talked to a couple people about this, gotten some advice, learned a lot of things, and I'm excited to learn even more as I try to adjust these levels here throughout the year. I think what I'm gonna do is apply this plan and then I'm gonna take another soil test later on um, in the season, in the fall, just to kind of get some results as to how I did and to see how these levels have changed over time. So I've already put down my pre-emergent application. The soil test was taken before that. So before my pre-emergent application, these are what my levels were. As you can remember in that pre-emergent I put down, there was fertilizer in it. I think it was a 2338. So I am getting a nitrogen boost, little bit of phosphorus in there and some potassium too. As far as the rest of the season goes, I'm gonna back off on the phosphorus, which means that my milorganite applications are gonna be much fewer and far between. We are getting phosphorus out of milorganite. It's a 640. And so I really need to be conscious of, of that. So I am gonna be using um, a Ringer Lawn Restore clone that I did find at my local Lowe's. Kind of interested to see how that goes. Uh, I think it's a 1002. So I will be putting that down this year. And I will still be putting milorganite down, but just not as much, not nearly as much. I wanna keep that, that phosphorus in that target area, of course. And one thing that I did learn is that in my area here in Utah, phosphorus kind of occurs naturally in the soil here. So that's good to know and something to definitely keep an eye on. Another thing that I'm gonna do this year is I'm gonna be supplementing my regular fertilizer applications with the micronutrient applications from the next products from Green County Fertilizer. I am gonna be putting those down a lot more regularly 
and a lot more often, especially since I got my Hosen sprayer back in action again. So that's gonna be happening. I'm, I'm looking to be using the RGS quite a lot and the microgreen kind of, kind of a lot. Uh, I'm, I'm planning on being very generous with those, especially the microgreen. Uh, the microgreen I'll probably be putting down at least once a month. I like the microgreen because it has a lot of the things that I need uh, based on these results. I'm going to be getting my potassium. There's 2% in microgreen. I'm also going to be getting sulfur. There's 3% sulfur. That's going to adjust my pH. Um, and then iron. I'm going to be getting iron from from microgreen. There's 3% iron in there, which is almost the equivalent of melorganite. I think melorganite is 4% iron. Not that that really matters or makes much of a difference, but um, the Ringer Laundry Store clone that I'm going to be using, I don't think has any iron in it. So to be getting my iron from another source is going to be really nice. I may also put down a sulfur application, uh, a granular application of sulfur. I'm not sure yet. Leaning that way, but we'll see. So I think that's pretty well going to do it for my plan. It's nothing complicated. It's just really switching up the way that I'm going to be applying my fertilizers and exactly what fertilizers I'm going to be using. Um, like I said, I, I do still plan to, to put melorganite down. I've been stocking up on it over the winter. I'm looking at it right here behind the camera. Um, I do have a lot of melorganite. <laughs> so I, I do intend to put it down. But like I said, I'm going to be backing off pretty heavily on it. And it's not nearly going to be going down as hard and as often as I have been in the past couple of years. Um, I am going to be using a Ringer Lawn Restore uh, clone. And that's going to help me back off on my phosphorus. And I'm going to be using the next products, in particular the 002 microgreen to get um, my potassium and sulfur and of course iron and I've relied on melorganite for so long to get uh, that green pop and that's one of the biggest things that I get out of melorganite is that deep green color and that's because it has iron in it and um, if I can get my iron from somewhere else uh, while still trying to maintain these these uh, nutrient levels um, I can definitely do that and still expect similar, if not even better results. So I'm really excited to try this plan. I'm really excited for um, what's going to happen next and, and to see results and to see uh, and try, try a new approach. It's, it's fun to try new things. It's fun to experiment a little bit. And I'm still sticking with organic products. So um, I can still not have to worry about um, messing anything up or going too hard or or too light, uh, I can still expect, I think, similar results. And I'm looking forward to that. So with that, I think that's gonna do it for this one. Let me know if you have any comments on my results, anything that you think I ought to try as well. Have you taken a soil test? If that's something that you haven't done, I would definitely recommend doing it. Uh, you don't have to go with Soil Savvy, there's other companies out there. Soil Savvy is definitely really easy to use. So yeah, give it a try, see what's going on and learn what's going on beneath the soil and find out what your lawn actually needs. Uh, every lawn is different. So it, it's good to know what's going on in there and what you can do to make it as healthy as possible. So with that, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.